Justin Tomlinson. To serve under your uh, chairmanship today, and first of all, as a parent myself, my heart breaks for the unimaginable loss that Oliver Steep's parents suffered. It's every parent's worst nightmare, and I want to pay tribute to the honourable member for Newcastle upon Tyne North, who was passionate in advocating those very serious points that would have driven 109,000 people. That is a huge number of people for this petition, and that is why so many of us are here today. And uh, I believe it's the debut for the minister, and there's nothing worse than when you are asked direct questions. Uh, but I thought I would help with one of the key questions that the Honourable Member for Newcastle upon Tyne North said, would I want my daughters in a setting with a change ratio? Absolutely not. And I very much hope we can get clarity around there. But first of all, I want to pay uh, tribute to the new minister who was kind enough to come and visit my constituency on Thursday. She came to Imagination Childcare Nursery in Morden, a fantastic nursery. And I can tell you, the owner, Becky Cruz, and her wonderful team were incredibly proud because the minister not only took time to tour all of the rooms, engage <coughs> and interact with the children, including uh, a biscuit decorating with my own daughter, Margot, who was very excited to meet one of uh, my London office friends. Uh, but she also took the time to have a round table with uh, Becky, with councillor Joe Morris, who owns the Play Steps Nursery, also in my constituency. And she, believe me, is a resident expert on all things nursery related. I don't think I've ever been uh, lobbied as hard as I have done by Joe. And it was a real opportunity. And I've, I've hosted countless ministerial and shadow ministerial visits over the years. But genuinely, the minister was willing to listen, yeah. to be challenged, to take on board. And even though she is so new to the brief, had a, a complete oversight of the things coming forward. And I am very excited for her response to this debate. No pressure there. And it was the uh, principle of challenges and opportunities that, that we covered. And, and first of all, the key one that is being discussed today around ratios. And I echo the comments that the Honourable Member for Newcastle upon Tyne North has made in this area. I'm in complete, total agreement on that area. And I think we should just simply rule out those changes. And I think it's telling that if Scotland is held up as some sort of uh, panacea of, of brilliance, where are the Scottish MPs today to advocate how well that has gone? And I pay tribute to the National Day Nurseries Association, who've done some uh, detailed research, which was you know, pretty black and white in terms of 90% of providers uh, find it hard to recruit level three staff, and 52% of staff who are thinking of leaving and are unhappy are because of uh, the workload. And clearly, if you change those ratios, the workload goes up. And my honourable friend for Winchester uh, was absolutely on the money when he talked about how hard it is when there's two parents going for two people. How on earth do they do it day in, day out, and if we change those nurseries? And actually, we saw on the visit, the big challenge comes, uh, particularly in those ages, where toilet training, which then requires them to be taken out of the room. So those eyes... Uh, on the prize are not actually in that room and the children don't necessarily all time them on, on uh, <laughs> set breaks. Uh, believe me, we know. Uh, and, and therefore, I just think this, uh, it's all about quality and I cannot see a single argument that would say that this would improve quality. And uh, for all of us, we all visit our local schools and particularly if you talk to primary schools, the emphasis they put on uh, where children are in terms of their expected levels those early years are so incredibly important and to catch up further down the line uh, is incredibly difficult. Now, I do, I do recognise that the government has been trying uh, to make a significant positive difference in this area. Over £20 billion spent over the last five years, the rapid expansion of the 15- and 30-hour term time uh, free childcare, the crucial changes within universal credit that allows uh, those to claim up to 85% of childcare costs have been a real game changer to help get more people, more working parents uh, back into work with greater flexibility. However, there is still the funding challenge around predominantly these are relatively low paid jobs and therefore as we have rightly increased the national living wage above inflation year in year out, that has exceeded the increases of funding <coughs> that the government has provided, which has put on real pressure on to nurseries. And the rules are very strict about how they could secure additional income to balance the books. And this all puts pressure 
onto the capacity. And uh, both speakers have highlighted uh, the fears of nurseries leaving um, the sector. And I represent a constituency that has a transient population. Uh, people tend to move to my constituency, so they don't necessarily have a network of older generations who can step in. So their ability to work, to ability to contribute to a growing economy is predicated on having access to childcare. And it can be difficult. There are waiting lists. It is not a given that you can secure. In schools, you can always school, secure a school place. That is not the case in nurseries. And therefore, we have to get a grip around that funding. And the way we can do that, and the minister needs to do some digging in some cupboards, because back in 2017, there was an independent review on the cost of childcare and impact on providers that was meant to be published, but has not yet been seen. And I would suggest that would be helpful in identifying exactly what is needed around the funding to make sure there is a sustainable and positive footing for nurseries to remain and crucially expand. Now where we can help is on issues around Ofsted. It was highlighted not unreasonably that that is a, a real fear factor for staff. One day every four or five years they will be reviewed. It transpires not all children <coughs> perform uh, with the tasks that they're presented with on the days where the inspections come on which puts big pressure onto the nurseries who could have had uh, 364 days in the rest of the year where all of those tasks went really well and looked good to an inspector but on the day they come in that can then make a crucial difference and there was a feeling in our roundtable discussion that there needed to be greater consistency so that when the inspections came in everybody knew what was expected and then they would be reviewed on that a greater emphasis or perhaps a sole emphasis around safeguarding uh, to make sure that that is the priority and just giving the whole system that confidence that it is uh, consistent and fair and that those nurseries who are doing an amazing, wonderful job are then uh, recognised for that. We also need to play fair between school-based nurseries and nurseries yeah. in independent settings. I've raised before uh, in uh, parliamentary questions in the main chamber around the fact that um, standalone nurseries are, uh, have to pay business rates. Yet, if a nursery is based in a school setting, then they don't have to pay business rates. And uh, yet, a standalone nursery surely is an educational setting because it's Ofsted rated. And so that is inconsistent and unfair. And one nursery that I visited, this equated to around about £100 per child that could be going into providing additional support, additional, uh, and that could be a big, big difference. And also, it is a limit on their ability to expand because if you have multiple nurseries, then that actually is caught altogether in your business rates um, uh, size in terms of whether you can then apply for the discount. So again, some nurseries will then not seek to expand to avoid that. Another big ask, and I know the Minister is very passionate around this area, is around providing actual support that nurseries need. Nurseries are fantastic at childcare provision, but increasingly with a great awareness, and I say this as a former Minister for Disabled People, around SEM provision, additional supports that uh, children will need. And they are crying out for the advice so they can do it right. The guidebooks don't necessarily give definitive guides to every uh, sort of unique circumstances that are presented to them. And again, on that round table, we heard of, in some cases, delays. There was one example of a delay of six months to get training on how to use the EpiPens. So in reality, a nursery would either have to take the risk or would have to say to that, that child, and crucially those parents, we can't, um, we can't take on your children for six months uh, with the consequences over there. Too often there's backlogs in accessing the uh, diagnosis. And it is a frustration to the uh, nurseries that they are day in, day out working with the children. And they're often first to uh, identify additional support that's needed. But they aren't given greater weight in the process. There should be a two-track uh, process that so they can feed directly in. They could populate much of that evidence. And that would actually take some of the pressure off the, uh, the system that's trying to deal with those backlogs. And uh, finally, uh, both Becky and Joe highlighted if... There was the better support in place, greater consistency, some movement on the funding, and we didn't go down that path around the ratios. They are both desperate to expand because their respective nurseries are full. And again, going back to my honourable friend's uh, powerful speech from uh, Winchester around that if we're going to support a growing economy, we need to provide this provision 
for an increasingly flexible uh, workforce, then we need people like the Becky and Joe, who've got amazing nurseries, to be able to expand. We all benefit from that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.